uh, Professor Carrick uh, talk about functional neurology and meanings of the eye motion regarding to brain function and activity of the, of the brain. What would you tell me? Boy, we could tell you a lifetime of experience. <laughs> in 10 minutes. Yeah, in, uh, in 10 minutes we could tell you that the visual system of humankind is a system that's been with us from ancient times. It's not only with humans, but it's with animals uh, of all uh, different forms. We find that the visual system is the one system in humankind, in the, in the nervous system, that utilizes every area of the brain. Some systems don't use every area of the brain, but the visual system does. So that we find by examining the relationships of how your eyes move in reference to your head movement, we can really pinpoint and target and assess virtually every area of the human brain. And then uh, if we find that there's problems in those areas, then we can devise strategies that hopefully will return those. those Does that mean that we can map up the brain based upon how we move the eyes? Can it does. That? Yeah, it does. And in fact, uh, many research have, researchers have done this uh, over the years where we can use now functional MRI imaging, we can use PET scan, other types of imaging, and then we can record the functional aspects by recording in very, very fine detail how the, how the eyes move, and we can do this in concert with uh, recordings that we've done in the brain. So there's so much research that there's very little questioning about how major activities work. Of course, there's many questions about how things work in a variety of diseases. But the long and the short of it is, is that uh, the movements of the eyes are really a window of human brain function. And we can look at uh, these movements in varieties of stages of health and disease, uh, especially in degenerative diseases of the brain such as Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, Parkinson's, and in injuries of the brain that we see in sporting events or uh, people that have car accidents or a simple slip and a fall. When we see and we know that the brain is a receiver and transmits uh, motor activity, so we always have a motor response to whatever kind of multimodal stimuli we get. And we know that gravity is a constant stimuli versus all the other modalities are transient transient. So that means that we can analyze motor activity which can be a tremor or a inconsistence, the composition of motion based upon the window in eye motion. Sure, uh, basically you find that every human function that you can quantify from the ability to digest food to throwing a ball, there's a correlate in regards to what's happening in your in your eye motion. For instance, if you turn your head to one side, your eyes should go to the other side. So we look very carefully to see how smooth eye movements are, uh, if they're fast, if they're slow, if they're jerky. Uh, are they moving correctly to what we would expect with a certain stimulation? Or we can stimulate, for instance, your hand and have a certain eye movement or your foot. If your eye movements are, are not appropriate, uh, then you're not going to be able to walk. Uh, you find that some people have problems walking in the dark if they get up to go to the bathroom in the night that they have to be very very careful so we know that simple things like walking running eating just doing your general activity are largely dependent on the visual system and that when there's disease in a different part of the nervous system then we compensate with our brain and our eyes so the doctors can can look at them very carefully and really find out what is happening in that nervous system and brain and then prescribe some therapies that can be of assistance. We have this uh, functional approach to neurology and to medicine, I would say. So it's a new, well, not new, but a very modern uh, approach to look at things, use uh, all the information we collected over a century of research and put it to another step of application. How do you feel that this will change healthcare, if, that, if you feel that this is changing healthcare? Well, it should change healthcare because we're, we've learned enough to realize that we don't treat tissue. In other words, we don't treat a little part of the brain or the cell, we treat the way the brain works. So that if you have a problem thinking, 
uh, and, and reading a book, for instance, we want to do things that are functional to let you read that book. We don't want to quantify and get numbers and say, well, your brain is working like this if what you want to do is read a book. So we need to do things that are functional. We need to examine functionally, and when they, we need to prescribe uh, therapies which are functional. Because the brain uses uh, a whole load of different chemicals to communicate uh, within itself and to communicate to your arms and your legs and, and your stomach, uh, we find that we can't use pharmacy as much as we've used in the past. That specific functional activities such as uh, specific exercises, specific brain stimulations of the environment have a greater consequence in, in the majority of people if we can utilize it. Uh, rather than a first, um, a first attack using uh, pharmacy. In other words, if I have a, a certain problem in one area of my brain and I have different areas of the brain that use the same chemical, if I affect the, trans, the, the release of that chemical, I'm going to affect a greater area than just the simple one. So we find by uh, measuring a functional approach and, and using different computerized systems that allow us to look and take pictures of brain function that we can develop and utilize different strategies that are specific for those areas and then we can monitor and see whether whether we've made a change or not or whether we can make a change or whether a person has something that is permanent. Because plasticity is immediate. If it's there, we find it. Yeah, and plasticity is, is really uh, God's gift to humankind. Our brains can change. Even with the worst injury, even with the worst scenario, with the worst trauma, uh, which can be psychological, it can be physical, there usually can be some changes. And sometimes the changes that happen in people's brain affects their, their ability to live their life or affects their function. So when we say a functional approach, we do things that really target the individuality of the patient to be able to do the things that he or she not only needs to do, but enjoys doing, the things that will contribute to a more robust life, the things that will uh, make a difference in not only in their world but in the the general society and of course the family. Uh, one first uh, uh, talk about the autonomic nervous system, the automatic nervous system. That we, if we don't have that one, uh, nothing can work. Well, sure. Uh, when we talk about these systems, these are basically the systems that allow us to. Uh, have uh, enzymes in our mouth to start to digest, to digest food, to digest it in our stomach, to absorb nutrients. These are the areas that cause our heart to beat at a certain rate, to cause our blood vessels to constrict and deliver more blood, or to cause different uh, arterioles to dilate. These are under the control of the brain. If we were um, not humans or not life forms that are vibrant, if we were a tree, uh, we don't have much function except to grow and stand and resist the wind, uh, perhaps. But humans have different needs at different times. The need that I have sitting down to regulate my blood pressure is markedly different than if I'm running. Or the need lying is different than standing. Or the need if I eat a steak is different than if I eat, you know, a pound of pasta in order to have a functional type of a load. These are all dependent upon the brain. If your brain doesn't work, you're not going to be able to digest your food. If the brain doesn't work, you're not going to be able to throw the, the ball to your kids or, or someone else. Yeah, so think. what we do is we measure uh, brain activation and heart activation, or we'll measure the amount of oxygen you get to your fingers or the amount of oxygen that you get to your brain, uh, the amount of uh, enzymes that you would have, the amount of sweat that you have. And all of these things are such that if the brain is working well, we have areas of the brain that allow us to give ourselves these nutrients without having to think about it. And we call the system uh, automatic or autonomic because it shouldn't take a whole load of thought about it. But if it doesn't work, then you need a whole load of brain activity to be able to just get yourself out of a chair or to be able to do things that you reasonably should be expected to do. So we're, we're, we're faced with a very exciting uh, area in medical uh, practice and in research that is allowing doctors to serve their patients at a better level today than we've ever had before while embracing the challenge that we should be able to do it better tomorrow. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Very, very, thank you.